Wow, I really screwed the pooch on that last video. My apologies. Uh, you can't see it because I deleted it, but um, I uh, was trying to uh, uh, show how I solve one of the problems uh, that Joe Jones had mentioned in his recent video about fonts uh, and getting that information from uh, customers. He's 100% right. Um, you would think that companies, large companies that have their logos produced, made, uh, and otherwise uh, used would have a uh, person that they go to to always have their logo and provide that for advertising or sign making. Uh, so far, I think I've had one in, in seven years uh, that actually had good graphics. So Joe brings up a very valid point in that fonts are hard to identify because there are millions of them. Um, so I want to go through and demonstrate today the tool that I use. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the last run through was 100% first time I'd ever seen the results. Uh, I'll try to act surprised uh, when, uh, when I do it this time and uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, the, there were a couple of, uh, logos that Joe had shown in his, uh, piece. Let's see there, that is, uh, the after the fact. So I need to, I guess, download that again because I didn't rename it. So let me go there. That was that Trello logo. So let me pull that in again. Logo, there it is. Just search for images. Grab the first one. Save it. Yes. There we go. Put that back down out of the way. Now I am yeah, in mean, paint.net is where I'm at. Uh, at. And I'm going to open that logo I just downloaded. Um, because you can use your uh, uh, the tool that I'm going to show you to separate these letters, um, but you don't want extra crap. So what I'm going to do is use the eraser tool, uh, and I'm just going to erase this part of the logo. And then I'm going to uh, use this tool... When it gets a little more complex, I'll probably grab my pen. I have the Surface Book, and it makes that a whole lot easier. So get my deal. I'm going to use my pen here to go in and separate these letters. And then I will move that one. And same tool. Make sure I get it selected here. There we go. Let's see. And then you don't need both uh, of those L's. So I'm going to get my eraser. Oh, I can't have that selected. Get my eraser. Take that L off. Get my tool back here. There we go. Scoot that over. If you have a script font or a font like this that's all together, uh, then you're going to want to do something like this. And you don't have to clean it all up, but kind of if you try to fix it a little, put that pin down, it's messing with me here.
Name that up a touch and you can actually use this and kind of paint just to kind of fix that back. Close enough. Really, I believe it will not have any problems coming up with this font. Okay, so now I'm just going to save that. Then I'm going to show you the tool that I use. The website is whatfontis.com. <clears throat> I pay a $30 per year subscription to this program to this website and it's worth uh, about 10 times that. Uh, it improves the interface here uh, and also uh, gives you more advanced tools to use to clean up some of your uh, stuff in here. And so, you know, when I pulled this one in earlier, there was a problem I need to show you here. I'm going to use my magic selection tool. Anytime you drag pixels around, uh, you kind of create artifacts in a file. So I'm going to use the global uh, magic wand selection and just hit delete on that background and save it so that I'm sure that there's not any problem uh, like there was last time. And so I'll go back to what font is, and I will simply go to File Explorer and drag that picture uh, into whatfontis.com. And so it automatically uh, lined up the words as it tells you we detected them. It's a beta uh, deal, and if it doesn't look good here, go back and fix it. So we'll probably see that in the next step. So you can see that the font that they used for their logo is FF Market Pro Bold, uh, and it can be purchased from myfonts.com for $69. Um, and there it is. So you can make whatever word you wanted if you wanted to be... Um, whatever, I forgot what you said, Joe, but whatever you would put, uh, it would just be able to do, uh, do that in design edge. You'd have to buy it. You know, you're in the business to make money. So it's a commercial font. So moving along, I'm going to go now to the other sign that you had, which was, um, the, uh, signature streetscapes. Uh, and the first step for me in this process would be to, uh, delete uh, erase the uh, artwork part of things. So I'm going to get rid of that. Just using the eraser tool. You could paint.net is a free program. Uh, it is extremely easy to use in my opinion. So I'm going to crop to that. It's free. Uh, if you have Paint Shop, Adobe, or uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop, or uh, some other program that you're used to, you know, by all means, uh, use that. But this is a free program that I personally use. So I'm going to delete some double letters. We don't need two E's. Um, we don't need two uh, T's. That's a lowercase s. Uh, so I'm going to keep that. Uh, C A P and then these are duplicates E and S. So I'll just leave it like that. Now um, I'm going to show this again. Like I said um, in the video that you can't watch because I deleted it. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, you wind up with these uh, small images. This is a fairly small uh, picture, and you want to get a little more contrast, a little crisper. Uh, picture. You can use this if you're having to trace one uh, because the font doesn't exist or it was a custom made for the logo, but you can also use it before you uh, search for the font. So I'm going to go to image and I'm going to resize this. Um, let me kind of clean up my crop job here. And let's resize the whole thing. And I'm going to make it um, let's see, see, it's only 392 by 202 pixels. I'm going to take it up to 2000 pixels by 1000. And what that's going to do, uh, it's going to use paint.net and any of them do that. Uh, it uses the, uh, you know, just kind of a, a check and see what your neighbor pixel is doing, um, in order to, uh, 
kind of extrapolate what it would look like. So uh, it's still fuzzy, but as you can see, there's a little more definition because it's added a lot more pixels uh, in there. But then to take that to the next step, I use the magic selection tool, which is the little magic wand, and I click on black, and I have it set to global, so it picks every piece of black in the whole drawing. Uh, and then you can adjust with your uh, tolerance slider up there. Once we zoom in, you can adjust with this tolerance how much of that you want it to grab and not. So I kind of picked the smoothest result um, and go with that. So that's pretty good. I can probably, yeah, I like that. It gives it because that those are actually in there just a little bit farther. So okay. So now what I will do, I have the letter selected. Uh, so I will push control I, which will invert my selection and that will select the entire background. And then when I use a tool, uh, it only, uh, applies to what is selected. So I can come in here and erase and see how it cleans all that up. So it gets rid of all that, uh, haze, all of those soft edges and makes them nice hard edges. Uh, and then I can for the sake of, uh, if, if, let's see, let me back up. So if this was not all black already, uh, I would simply go in, I would invert my selection back, and I use the paint tool to paint it all black. Uh, it is, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do that step. I'm gonna hit delete uh, to clear any artifacts from this background that might be there. Uh, and then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'm gonna crop out this top line like that. And I'm going to crop and I'm going to save it as uh, signature logo one. As you can see, I already did this, so I'm going to overwrite it. Then I'm just going to uh, uh, undo and then I'm going to delete that out of there so that I can get rid of that. That way I can do just this part. I'll crop it. Save it as signature logo two. Yes and yes. Okay. Now I will go back to what font is and I'm going to pull in signature logo one and see what happens. Uh oh, I must have done a better job because this time uh, it actually pulled up the right one. Last time it didn't, and I stuttered on and on about how they could have just manipulated a different uh, font and uh, gotten uh, and made it for their own thing. But then, uh, to let the secret out, then when I did the uh, next part, that step two with the open face, um, it actually um, it found this Zephyr. Um, and when I, when you look at that, it can be purchased for $25. Um, but see, as you scroll on down here is Zephyr open face, uh, that has the embossed, uh, chiseled look. And so all you would have to do is come over here and buy this font. And they may probably even have a package, uh, where you can buy both the regular and the open face. But if you want to see it, find the open face, we can do that too. As you can see, we kind of found them both in one step, but it's Zephyr regular. We'll go back to what font is and we'll drag in the signature too. <clears throat> and so here we have a capital S. This is the step that you haven't gotten to see much of uh, because I pay for the extra. But if it has a question, it does put it up for you. So STR, that's a little E, that's a little S, C, A, and it's lowercase p. And we'll continue. And so here its first result is Zephyr open face. And then we can go up here. If you have paid the $30 a year, you can see the whole thing. And this is showing you um, paid and uh, free. And so um, if you were trying to find this just for free, uh, for personal use, of course, <laughs> then you could limit it to only show you free fonts. But chances are in commercial logos, you're going to find uh, that they're commercial.
and that you need to pay for them. So hopefully that helps. I'm sorry that it uh, wasn't as shocking because it was not me going through the first time. Um, but uh, there you have it. Whatfontis.com saves your life many times, many times. I use it every day.